Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports, doing a quick video on a custom pistol that I put together just a couple of months ago. This is based off of a Heritage Rough Rider 22 caliber single action revolver. You'll notice that it has a substantially shorter barrel than stock and it has this bird's head grip. So the idea that I wanted to put together was a stubby barreled nine shot bird's head grip single action 22 caliber revolver. I like the Heritage Rough Riders. I put together, uh, this is my second one that I've worked on. Um, the first one I kept a lot more normal. This one I went a little bit out of control with. Um, but I like that they come with both cylinders for 22 long rifle um, and 22 short and things like that, as well as a second cylinder for 22 magnum. So you can put a little bit, you know, higher velocity, a little bit more potent rimfire cartridges in these. The issue with the one that I wanted to build is I wanted the nine shot model, but I wanted a bird's head grip. Unfortunately, you can't get a bird's head grip nine shot model. So I had to buy a six shot model with a bird's head grip and a nine shot model with a just the normal uh, plow style grip and then do a little switcheroo there to make that work. Now, there were a couple of things that I had to do in that process. Um, unfortunately, the Rough Rider that I had was not particularly well put together. Um, the rear sight wasn't fully machined through, so I actually had to file the rear sight a little bit. And the, um, I guess you could call it the trough in the frame where the hammer spring lays um, was just a little bit proud and it wouldn't, you, you couldn't properly cock it. The timing was a little bit off. When you would um, fully cock it, it wouldn't lock the cylinder up. In order to do it, you really had to slam that hammer back and let the momentum of the cylinder lock itself in place. Um, I looked at it and realized, oh, the issue here is just that it needs to be filed down a little bit to give that a little bit more room to properly get down. Did that and it worked perfectly well. Now, obviously that may not have been a problem on the nine shot um, with the plow grip, that may not have been a problem on the six shot with the bird's head grip, but because I put them together, I think it kind of created a problem. But that's enough about kind of the frame. Up front is where the real magic happened here. I wanted a very stubby setup, just a very short barrel, and I accomplished that, I think. Um, it is about two inches long from the front of the cylinder to the muzzle. And I was able to cut it myself and then smooth out that transition so it doesn't have a sharp edge on the uh, muzzle. And then up front, I recrowned it using kind of old school methods of a, uh, a brass bolt and some lap lapping compound and, and kind of worked on that for a while um, until you have a pretty decent little transition. We're not talking like 11 degree target crowns or anything like that. It's just, you know, a little bit smoother transition. That obviously removed my front sight, so I had to figure out a new front sight option. I accomplished that with a uh, Ruger Mark III sight that I just had to tweak the base just a little bit to fit the contour of this barrel. And then I actually had to recut the entire front blade to be at the appropriate height to work with this notch. And it is, as you can see, sort of a, like a pyramid shaped setup there, but it actually works really, really well. You have a decent sight picture and I have a little bit of high visibility paint on there. At the bottom, get this guy kind of rattling around, um, I wanted to do a lanyard loop. Um, I accomplished that by drilling and tapping the bottom of the frame, adding a bipod swivel, and then actually bending this loop myself and putting it through there so that's pretty firmly attached. Uh, the whole thing can be unscrewed if you'd like to run it without it. And I have that set up. Eventually I'll do something in leather a little bit nicer, but I have sort of a little paracord here. Um, it loops through and pulls, and then it's attached to the holster, which is just a, um, it's a Gould and Goodrich holster that I kind of reformed to fit this. So the whole concept behind building this was really to have something to take that is relatively lightweight, that's, I mean, just stupidly reliable. It's not, can't get much more reliable than a, um, a well worked over uh, single action revolver um, that was able to shoot 
22 long rifle as well as uh, 22 WMR. This is able to do that because the lanyard I could take it if I'm you know, four wheeling or in a kayak or something, and it's probably not going to be lost forever if it falls out of the holster. Um, and I think I accomplished that quite well. It's a handy little thing with 22 WMR rounds. It blows decent sized fireballs out the front with such a short barrel. Um, I have run uh, rat shot through this, snake shot, and it's hilarious. It's just a tiny, slow-moving cloud of you know tiny, tiny pellets. Probably not gonna do any good with that. Uh, but I like how this turned out. The one thing that I did lose is the ability to easily um, reload it. How these are loaded, obviously, you um, have to put you know one at a time, rotate the cylinder, one at a time, rotate the cylinder, um, and there's a little uh, ejector there to eject the spent shells. Don't have that on the short of a barrel. So the quick and easy way to do that, um, you need to be a half cock, open the gate, press the button, and pull the pin. That allows you to remove the cylinder entirely, and you can actually use the pin to carefully push out those spent shells, reload it back up, slot it back in, and you're back in business. It's actually not as slow of a reload as you would think. So this whole thing was to sort of put together A, to fill a niche that I wanted, and also just to sort of show what you can do with an inexpensive um, base gun. These base guns are only about $120. The tricky part being I had to buy two of them and then swap parts back and forth in order to make it work. Um, but then, hey, you have two guns at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, overall the work on this was all done by hand. I didn't send this out to, for any custom work. I drilled and tapped that hole myself. I cut that sight myself. I cut the barrel and recrowned it, and, you know, uh, softened that edge a little bit myself. I did a cold re-bluing on it that's not very good, but it works. So just sort of showing what you can do with inexpensive base guns if you want to do a, an interesting custom project. So um, as always, you can see more things like this. If you follow our social media, the Instagram page, um, I have a lot more frequent updates than this. It has been quite a while since I posted a video and with everything going on in this uh, sort of soft quarantine that we have, probably gonna have more time to uh, get some of my projects on video. But I figured this would be a good opportunity to show this off and to hopefully inspire some of you guys to build something interesting like this on your own. So stay tuned for hopefully more updates on projects like this and some other ones that I have in the works and of course, Thanks for watching.